drivers, drunkards are people too. And when you're out doing gig work, guaranteed you are going to encounter drunkards. The point of this video is to help you navigate with drunkards. Now there's going to be many aspects to this, but there's not going to be anything more out of this video and nothing less. So the first thing, I'm going to share some information with what happened to me on an alcohol delivery this morning. I'm going to go over some of the great things that come with alcohol deliveries. Next, I'm going to cover some of the really bad things that can happen. I'm going to give you warning signs that you need to watch out for when these happen. This is going to help prepare you for what's coming. So what happened today? It's really been dead. And thankfully, an order came through on Uber Eats, a $6 delivery from 7-Eleven going to an apartment complex. When I got to 7-Eleven, the cashier told me that the previous driver had returned the beer. So I knew right away, uh-oh, this has high potential for something going wrong. So in this case, for this order, I started communicating with the customer right away. I didn't want to waste my time unnecessarily, knowing that I'd probably have to call Uber Eats and cancel the order. And I really didn't want to do like I've done before, drive out, there's a problem, and have to bring it back. Hey, good morning. This is Russ with Uber Eats. Sorry, I was just um, reaching out. A, a previous driver had brought this order back, and I just wanted to make sure you're there. Can you hear me? What's up, Oh, you had done... Yeah, the um, it was the order of the beer. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to connect with you. I don't know. They said that you weren't available. So I just wanted. Um, I'm on my way now. I just wanted to connect with you to make sure that there wasn't a problem. So I'll, I'm I'm leaving Seven uh, Eleven now. So I should be there in a couple minutes. All right. Thank you, sir. See you in a minute. Good morning. Hey, what's going on? Not much. Sorry for the hassle. I've learned doing food delivery sometimes um, when things don't go smoothly, it's best to reach out. Careful, it's a paper bag there. Have a good rest of your morning. Thank you, sir. Doing this order made me remember all the things that happen, things that can go wrong when you're doing alcohol deliveries. And I, I don't want you to be unnecessarily scared. There are really good things that happen when you do alcohol deliveries. One of my best memories, it was during the holiday season a couple years ago. I had $500 worth of wine. The customer tipped me $50 in the app. Another great time, another massive shipment of alcohol. My trunk was pretty much filled, and I got a really good tip on that, delivering it to an elderly couple in a house. And I've also done many other alcohol-related deliveries. Things have generally gone smoothing, checking the ID, making small talk with the customer while I do that. And overall, tips are pretty good. Now, why is this? Do you realize that when you're doing food delivery and these alcohol orders, you're the customer's bartender? When people go to bars, they're drinking, they're having a good time, and they're tipping the bartender well. In this case, when you're bringing alcohol to the customer, you are acting as that bartender. And in general, this is when you can get really good tips. So that is one of the positive things for alcohol deliveries. Drivers get really good tips. Now, there are bad things that happen as well. And thankfully, it's only been a couple times because I mostly do it during the day. I don't go out late at night. One of the bad times that I had, and it was minor, when I was doing an alcohol delivery first thing in the morning, the lady didn't really like that I was having to scan her ID, and I tried to explain it, but she wasn't thinking clearly. And so she rated me poorly, and I don't recall if she took away the tip. But that's one thing that happened. Another couple of times I've had to return the alcohol order because I couldn't find the customer. I had knocked on the door. The roommate said that he's passed out somewhere. And so right then I knew, well, I'm done. And I returned it and also got that return delivery fee. The most scary thing that happened to me doing gig work related to alcohol is when I did rideshare. It was several years ago during Halloween and I had been giving rides to college students from house party to house party. Easy money. It was a lot of fun. But there were these two huge guys and they had their girlfriends with them. So my car was full. Once they were in the car, they produced this bottle of open alcohol. And I said that they couldn't take it. And we did get it out of the car. But at that point, they were already in the car. It was too late. And I didn't want to create a scene. So 
I drove as smoothly and quickly as possible to the destination and it was really far away. It wasn't in the best part of town and these guys were talking about fighting and all sorts of violent activity and I was just quiet. So all during that ride, I was very nervous. I was very friendly with them when they interacted with me and I just tried not to speak too much and get them dropped off. But that was one time I definitely experienced a little bit fear inside. So this leads right into some of the warning signs. When you experience these, this is when you need to be extra cautious doing alcohol deliveries. So your very first warning sign would be the day parts of the alcohol deliveries. In the morning, like I already shared with my previous bad experience, this tends to not go well because drunkards are not feeling their best and they're not able to think clearly. So I've just found you're at the highest risk of having poor ratings and no tips when you're doing alcohol deliveries in the morning. Opposite end would be nighttime. This is when you really need to fear for your personal safety because what could go wrong? It's dark. Do you deliver to hotel rooms? Do you go into poorly lit areas of apartments or houses? How can you protect against this? At nighttime, always have a flashlight with you. This, this way you can light up the area and, and especially not trip or fall. And it helps when you scan the ID as well to have a tiny flashlight. I happen to have this one. Chad from GigTube recommends it and it's awesome. It's an LED, lights up the whole entryway and I use it to scan the IDs. And there are other things that you can do to protect yourself. Carry protection. And I'll leave that up to you to figure out what you're comfortable with doing. But I guarantee you, I always have my increased level of protection whenever I'm doing any kind of alcohol delivery because what could go wrong? Another thing that you can do to protect yourself during alcohol deliveries and really all food deliveries, use a body camera. I use them for all my drop-offs. There's a variety of them out there and especially the ones with night vision are very helpful. That way it protects you, it documents what happens, and it also gives you a chance to defend yourself should you be accused of doing something wrong. But really it also puts that customer on notice when they see the camera that they are being recorded and maybe this will keep them on their best behavior. Another warning sign is people that are intoxicated or frequently intoxicated, they're not able to control their emotions well and definitely they're not thinking clearly. So you need to be aware of this and be as kind and happy and accommodating as possible. And you're going to do this for a couple reasons. One, your own personal safety. And we're in a customer service industry. So when you give your best to the customer and they're very happy, they're going to tip you well. And this is obviously a great side benefit of doing work. There's always those moments of silence when you're scanning the ID, and you can use this time to improve your customer service skills, ask them how their day is going, keep them talking, happy and friendly. Because again, alcohol deliveries, you're bringing them their favorite beverage, and they're going to be happy. And so you want to be happy as well, and they're going to give you a good tip. One more minor warning sign for alcohol deliveries. You know that as the driver, you have to check the ID. Sometimes customers order a bunch of other food and there's alcohol in there, and you'll see that note, leave it at the door. This could be on purpose to try to get you to leave the alcohol, say they're underage or don't have an ID. Or this could just be something they always do for all their food deliveries, and they actually forgot that they have alcohol, and they know that they need to scan their ID too. So what I do is when I'm a few minutes out, I'm always messaging the customer to say I'm on my way. And then especially if it's an alcohol delivery, if they have some kind of note in there, leave at the door, something indicating that they don't want to see me, I'll remind them gently that I need to scan their ID because of the alcohol. And this just helps ease communication between the both of you and avoid any confrontations. Overall, alcohol deliveries can be very profitable and they can also be very scary for you. So use these techniques that I've taught you today to keep you safe. Now, what other areas of gig work where your personal safety could be at risk? Have you ever considered that? Especially doing rideshare. 
few months ago, Uber put out that call that anybody can just call a number and get a ride. You don't even have to have an account. And we already know about driver safety. That is so scary when you have passengers in your car, you don't know who they are. What if they have fake accounts in general on Uber and Lyft? Look at all the carjackings, the murders that have happened. This is scary stuff. So it's really deplorable when Uber opens up to everybody, the general public, just call this number and we'll give you a ride. So I made a video about that and I'll have that for you next for your review. My name is Russ. Don't forget to like the channel, like this video, and please share in the comments below. What kind of tips do you have for fellow drivers doing alcohol deliveries?